Today we're continuing with the topic of classifying matter. We still need to be able to differentiate between elements, compounds, and mixtures. And given five questions, I need you to be able to differentiate the difference between elements, compounds, and mixtures. And to achieve mastery, you're going to need to get four out of five questions correct. Let's do a brief summary of last time's video. Last time we discussed that if we look at an item and it has a mass and a volume, which is it takes a space, it's considered matter. Now, matter can be physically separated at times, and sometimes it cannot. If we cannot separate it physically, we're considered a pure substance. And in this category, if we have a single atom of a specific item, it's going to be an element. And elements cannot be separated. Now, if we have two or more different atoms, we're considered a compound. And compounds can be separated, but it has to be chemically separated into elements. If we look at matter, and it can be physically separated, then it's considered a mixture. Now, if the mixture looks the same throughout, that means you cannot tell the difference. You cannot tell that there are other things in there, even though there are. You're going to be considered a homogeneous mixture. Homogeneous mixtures look the same throughout. If you can see that there are items inside of it, that there are different components that make up the mixture, then it's going to be called a heterogeneous mixture. And heterogeneous mixtures can be easily distinguished by the different components that are inside. Whether you're homogeneous or heterogeneous, you can be physically separated by filtration, distillation, or chromatography. Now we're going to talk about particle diagrams today. What we see in front of you is a particle diagram. So it'll pretty much be a diagram that has some type of dots or other items, but they're supposed to represent different particles or atoms. So in this case, if we look at our particle diagram, so in this case, if we look at our particle diagram, we see that it consists of one type of dot. That means this particle diagram is showing us a single element. So we're going to call these atoms element one. So whatever element this is, this diagram only shows us that specific element. So whenever you see a diagram like this and we classify it, since we have all the same elements, this is going to be considered a element. Now, if we look at this next particle diagram, we're going to see that, yes, we have different dots, and we have two different kind of dots, or two different types of particles here. We're going to call the white one element one, and the other one's going to be element two. So we want to see what's going on with this item. These items are not touching, the particles are not touching. That means they are physically combined. They are there just together in the same space, but they are not combined with each other. They did not react with each other. Since we have two different elements in one given space, we're going to be considered a mixture of elements. Once again, remember the important part is they are not touching, which means they are not chemically combined. They are just physically combined. For this next particle diagram, we see that there are particles that are touching each other, which means they have formed a compound. Remember, each particle type is considered one element. And as we see here, we have a singular black element chemically combined since they are touching with two white elements. So this is considered a compound. They're all the same compound. So if we were to classify this, this would be classified as a compound, not a mixture. So once again, that's because every particle in here is the same compound. A mixture means we have multiple different things in one place. This is just a compound because it's the same compound throughout. If we look at this item, we have different reactions. We have different ratios chemically combined. So that means we're seeing different compounds because they're physically combined. That's compound number one. This is compound number two. We also have a compound number three. So we have three different compounds in one place. I can differentiate them 
that means I can see that they are different based on the ratio of elements that are made. And that is compound number four. We can see that it's different from compound two and three and very similar to compound one, but its chemical composition is different. This is a mixture of compounds. Once again, that's because we have several different compounds in one area that are not chemically combined. So this is a mixture of compounds. Let's move on to this next one. We see some white particles, we see some black particles, and we see some white and black particles that are touching. So let's go ahead and label these. That's an element. This is also an element, because remember, these are not touching. Now the ones that are touching in this case are a compound, because they're chemically combined. They are touching. So if I were to categorize this, this is going to be a mixture of elements and compounds. Because once again, they are in the same place, but they are different types. I can differentiate them. I can see them. They are a heterogeneous mixture in this case, if I look at the particle diagram. So it's a mixture of elements and compounds. Now, let's see if we can classify this particle diagram. What is it? This one's a bit difficult. We're going to see that we have two different types of particles. We have white particles and we have black particles. So take some time and think about it. Classify each one of those items so we can see what it is that we have. Now, if we look at the black ones, they are touching. So that means they're chemically combined. However, that means these two particles are the same element because they're the same particle. The same can be said for the white particles. They're two white particles and they are chemically combined. They are touching each other. Now, if we go by the definition, remember, if it's a single type of atom, we're going to be an element. So the correct answer for this is we have two different ones. That's element one. That's element two. We are a mixture of elements. Once again, that's because each particle is made out of one item. Some particles, some elements in nature are diatomic. That means if I have oxygen gas, hydrogen gas, they're going to be showing up as a pair of twos. So it's going to be two hydrogens, two oxygens, but they are going to still be considered elements because they are made out of one type of particle, one type of element. Now we're going to move on to classifying particle diagrams in our packet. So let's look at the first image. We want to see how is it separated. Now if we look at these items, there are one type of particle. Going off of that, if I were to look at this, I know it's one type of particle, so it would be a pure substance. If I have one type of atom, I'm going to be an element. If I have two different types of atoms, I'm going to be a compound. Remember, we only had one type of atom, so this is going to be considered an element. And can it be separated? If we look at our flow chart, it says no, it cannot be separated. So this particle diagram represents an element, and it cannot be separated. Let's look at our next one on our packet. We have particles. Some say H, some say Cl. And the important thing is they are touching. When things are touching, they are chemically combined. So that means I have different particles that are made out of two or more atoms. In this case, two atoms, one H and one Cl. Let's look at our particle diagram. Since we only had one type of substance, it's still going to be considered a pure substance. But in this case, as I have two different atoms combined together, I'm going to be a compound. Can I separate it? Yes, I can chemically separate it into different elements. So my classification is compound, and it can be chemically separated. This next item, let's take a quick look. Now, if I look at these items, I see that we have different particles. We have green particles, we have orange particles, and we have white particles. These particles themselves are not touching, so they're just physically in the same place. So once again, we just said that each item is one specific section. Now, if we look at this, we're going to see that we have different types of items, three different types of elements. 
did they look the same throughout? No, everything looked different. So that means I am a heterogeneous mixture from the particle diameter, which means I can physically separate it through filtration, distillation, or chromatography. So this is a mixture of elements, and it can be physically separated. This next item is kind of like our challenge problem. We have one type of particle, which is the red particles. These particles are touching, which means they chemically combine. But remember, we have to classify whether it's an element or a compound. For an element, it has to be one type of atom. For a compound, it has to be at least two different types of atoms. Right now, we had one type of atom. Yes, they may have been chemically bonded together, but those same particles, those two red particles, were the same type of particle. So this is going to be an element. Can we separate elements? No, we cannot separate elements. Next up, we have this item. We see that we have nitrogens and hydrogens. They are touching. That means they're chemically combined, which makes it a compound because it's two or more atoms together. We also see we have a white particle and a red particle that are smaller. Those are also touching. That means they're chemically combined. If I were to classify this, I figured out I have two compounds. And they don't look the same in this particle diagram. So if I look at my flow chart, it's going to be a mixture. And since they don't look the same, this is going to be a heterogeneous mixture, which means I can physically separate it. So this is a mixture of compounds, and it can be physically separated. This next diagram, we see we have pink particles by themselves. So that's going to be one type of element. We see two red particles together. But remember, they're the same particle, so that's also going to be considered an element. I have HCl, chemically combined because they're touching. I have N and H, chemically combined because they're touching. So I notice that my pink particles are elements. My red particles are elements. My N and Hs are compounds and HCl is a compound and I can clearly see the difference between all of these so if I know I have elements and compounds this is going to be a mixture of elements and compounds how is it separated then remember since I can see the difference I know I'm going to be a mixture and since I see the difference it's going to be heterogeneous and heterogeneous can be physically separated so this is a mixture of compounds and elements and it can be physically separated Now I want you to go ahead, take some time, and work on the independent practice. Use your notes to complete it. If you need any help, just call me over.